Hey, what's up? And welcome to Hack My Growth. In today's video, we're taking a look at a new web scraper that can be extremely helpful when we are analyzing the search results. Hey, thanks so much for checking out this video. If this is your first time watching or maybe you've been watching a while and you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, please do so now. We create content on this channel to help you get the most out of your digital marketing activities. So we recently started exploring Bright Data, and this is a proxy network as well as web scrapers that allow us to get some pretty cool information that will help when it comes to planning a search marketing or SEO strategy. So when we are looking for a term, one of the things that we need to do is always look at the search results. So in this case, let's say I wanted to target the term SERP analysis. So the first thing we need to do is look at the search results themselves. Now, I like to use a lot of these widgets to help me better understand the search results, but I also always need to scroll down and, and kind of understand what's going on, who's ranking, what type of content's ranking, why are they ranking, what are the different elements in the page, what are the related uh, search queries that we find on this page. And so this can take some time, and it is an important step. Like We need to be going to the search results to understand it. But what's also helpful if we're able to actually extract this information and then process it on our own to get even more insights. And we start to layer it with other data, uh, which will really help, at least in my case, to build a strategy that's going to work. So sometimes pulling the data off the search results can be pretty difficult. And that's where APIs can come in. Now, what's really cool is you don't actually have to be a programmer. I don't consider myself a programmer. I consider myself decent at copy and pasting. So with the help of Bright Data, we can actually pull a lot of cool data from the search results and layer it with some other data that gives us deeper insights into the search results so we can plan a better strategy. So go ahead and sign up for an account if you want to follow along with this video. If not, you can sign up afterwards and try it out. It's actually really, really reasonable uh, in order to like get the data you want. Uh, and I believe they have a free trial too. So go ahead and try that. So when you're in your dashboard and you want to start to play around with this, you can go over to this little... Uh, map icon here and click on that. And then we can see I've got a SERP API right here. Now in this, I've got my configuration settings and this is what's gonna allow me to connect a number of things, but I can also go and check out the SERP API playground. Now you're gonna need this access in order to play around in here because you're gonna have your own host name. So if you wanna do the playground first, just to kind of see what you can build, you just go ahead and click this link here. So here we are with the SERP API playground. Now I'm gonna take that same query that I did up here, SERP analysis, and I'm going to drop it in right here. Now you've got a number of different settings. You can choose the search results that you wanna look at. So Google, Bing, Yandex, DuckDuckGo. For me, we target mostly Google because it's the big boy, right? And then we can choose whether we're doing search, uh, maybe maps, trends, or reviews. So there's a lot of different settings that you can tick on and off here. Now for me, I work in Python, so I always switch this over to Python. And then what's really cool here is I can also see the HTML and the JSON output with this query. So I go ahead and hit search and it's going to do uh, its cool stuff here. Uh, it's giving me the actual Python right here that I need to use to, to call this. But then I get to see the results here and I can actually click on each of these elements and it'll pull it up over here for me. Um, I can see every single one of these elements. I can see the people also ask sections. I can see the answers there. I can see the search results uh, organically here. Um, I can see that there's some videos in this, in this search results here, and I can see the related searches. So in one quick call, I got a ton of data. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, I don't know what to do with this JSON LD data. It's not super helpful to me. And, you know, for a lot of times it can be a little bit confusing, but the reality is, is it's pretty easy to break down. Um, but to make it even easier, I created a collab notebook where you can just kind of plug and play there once you set up with, with bright data. So what I wanted to do was better understand this query myself. So we put the query here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so you can kind of see all the steps here. Um, we set up the API call and then here's the Google search data spitting it out like this. Now this is all nested JSON and using it or seeing it like this isn't the most helpful for us, but if I actually wanna make some sense out of this and go use it to, to plan strategy, I can break it down. So the first thing I did was build something called SERP data overview. This just tells me uh, within a simple table, the search engine I used, 
the query, how many results are for this term, uh, and a little bit of other information like the language and the page title. What I'm really interested in though are the organic results. So now I've got the links. These are all the top 10 in order. I've got the title, I've got the description, any extensions those pages might have. So this is other information. Maybe this is inline text or we've got a star rating here. We've got a site link. So this is actually starting to show me some of the cert features. And then I get to see the rank. Uh, this is the rank organically. And then this is the global rank. So this is how it ranks within all the elements on the page. So this link ranks number one in organic results, but it actually ranks sixth on the page. Why is that the case? Well, if we go back here, we notice that we've got feature snippet, we've got, and then all these questions down here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. The first result is actually six down on the page, which is very, very telling for us. This is a very competitive search result and all of the search results are pushed pretty far down based on the different elements that are on the page. So again, this is really helpful for me right away to go, man, if I rank number one for that term, I'm actually number six. So how much energy and focus am I going to have on this term if I'm not going to be able to get it based on competitiveness? So I'm really starting to get insights right now. What else is cool is I can see what are some of the other things I could target because people also ask are ranking above position one. So I might want to rank or target these terms, like what are these questions here and be building really, really specific pieces of content in order to rank in those positions. And we've got the questions, we've got the answers, we've got the links that we can use to do some research. We also can pull out the related terms. So we can say, all right, well, maybe this term is, is a little bit too competitive, but here's some related terms I might be able to go after, uh, which is which is really cool too. So now I'm getting some keyword research. I'm understanding the search results a little bit better uh, and, and I'm getting some ideas of what strategies I could take. Now, I also want to use their trend analysis. If you go up here, you'll see that one of the options is trends. And I can put the same query in here and I can do the search. Now, the thing with this one is you're not going to see like HTML and the Python script. You're just gonna get this raw JSON data. And a lot of this is nested because there's a lot of different pieces of data here. And again, processing it might be a little bit difficult. This is where Colab again can be helpful. So we're running the query here, we're pulling all the data here and you're probably going, this doesn't make any sense. Uh, and then we start to process the data and we can get a timeline like this. So over the last 12 months, we saw that SERP analysis kind of came down here and then it's popped back up. It's starting to get a little bit more uh, searched. It's trending upward since about August 28th. We can also pull related keywords from the trend analysis. So I can pull all these keywords and I can see how like valuable these are, like are these trending up? Like so SERP analysis tools, SERP analysis free, Google SERP analysis, all those are a little bit more important than something like GPT-3 tutorial. So again, I can start to get some more keyword ideas and look at maybe some low hanging fruit that may not be as popular as the target term I'm going for, but also could maybe be a little bit easier for me to rank for. Now, looking at the related keywords here in a table is nice, but we can also visualize it with, with Python, which I think is really helpful so we can see which ones stand out. And we know that these ones are a little more important. These ones are less important. We can also pull the related topics using Bright Data SERP API. And to me, this might be my favorite part of it when pairing it with what I know about the search results now. Again, we can dump this, this data into a table. I can see the topic title and I can also see the type here. And then if I scroll down, I made some different graphs and we can see, all right, here's some, um, here's some queries around, you know, specific topics. And then here's some queries related to websites. Here's some queries related to types of software. We're starting to understand a little bit more of the entities involved here, which we know are really important. We've talked about structured data and other things on this channel. So I like this one a lot and I can even pull it down here and see in how they're all grouped together. The larger they are, the more popular they are, the smaller they are, the less popular. So I can start to get an idea as a whole of what's going on with the search result. Now, this is a lot of data to process through and we may wanna share it with somebody. So we can actually create a report, an HTML report, using all this information with the help of Python as well. So that's what this little chart does right here. We can run this little code here and we can say the analysis of the SERP query. These are the results. Uh, this is what the search results look like. You can see all that cool data here. As you scroll down, these are the related terms. Here's the trend analysis of the query that we're targeting. Here's the related terms, here's the related topics. And so now I can take all this information and begin to look at strategies to improve 
how I want to rank on this page and really understand what's going on within the search results. This is a super cool API. Uh, it does cost a little bit, but it's super reasonable. I think it's like $3 per thousand calls or something. Um, but you can go in and start to really better understand the search results and they're changing so much. Search is changing so much. The search results are changing so much. This is going to help you get a better idea of the content that's ranking, maybe answer some of those questions of why this content is ranking and some of the things that you might need to do in order to get better results yourself. If you go ahead and check out that Bright Data um, SERP API, let me know in either comment or send me an email and I'll send you a, a copy of this uh, collab file. And uh, then you can just kind of plug your data into it and begin to, to have some fun with the search results as well. If you got any questions, please comment below. Uh, I'd love to continue this conversation with you. And until next time, happy marketing.